NFL talk, three weeks away. I know you're a Giant fan. You're happy to have Saquon back, but your other team, the Baltimore Ravens, for some reason, they take preseason more serious than everyone else. They haven't lost a preseason game in like three years. Yeah. Uh, now, right. Carry it over to the, to the regular season and get back to the Super Bowl. I, but, I just don't know. I don't know who takes preseason football more serious than the hey, Ravens. Somebody's got to do it, okay? Uh, apparently. <laughs> somebody, somebody's got to do it. But kudos to the Ravens. I'm expecting a big year from Lamar this year. You and I both like him. We both expect big things from him this season. So we hope this is the season that it all comes together for him. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, my Colts, I'm, I'm happy to report Carson Wentz and Quentin Nelson, who both had foot surgeries three weeks ago, are expected to be in practice this week. And they're saying Carson Wentz might be ready possibly week one, but more than likely looking like week two. So that's a blessing for us because we thought we were going to miss him for at least the first four to six weeks. Yeah, absolutely. That's an amazing turnaround because it was it was going to look real shaky because – you were going to have to make a decision at quarterback one way or another. So this kind of, you know, takes off that pressure because, you know, the options were Nick Foles, who, you know, you can't go there with it. I mean, unless you're going to bring back Kaepernick for, for a week or two to, to try to, you know what I'm saying? But I think that ship has sailed already. So, yeah, you know, that's – this saved the Colts. Yeah. Um, I, I don't put much stock in the preseason football because – Again, it's it's guys who are just trying to make the team, right? Most starters don't stay on the field long. And by halftime, you got the third and fourth string guys out there. But in this particular instance, I did pay attention, not only because I'm a Colt fan, but because, as like you said, we never made the move for, for Nick Foles or anybody else. They kind of just said, look, either Jacob Eason or, or Sam Ellinger, one of you guys are going to win the job. And I've been watching both these young guys. I like Sam Ellinger when he came out of Texas. Bit of a gunslinger, turns the ball over a little bit too much for my liking but strong arm, a guy who looks comfortable. And same thing with Jacob Eason. When they drafted him in the fourth round uh, last season, not this past draft, but last draft, um, again, another guy who's super athletic, strong arm, but turns the ball over. Yeah. So I guess the Colts internally felt like we're going to give the young guys a shot, which I'm okay with. But now hearing this no news that Carson Wentz might be ready for week two, I can understand why they did that. Yeah, which is, hey, listen, even if you know you, you, can, you can throw the young guys out there week one, you know, one of those two guys, you know, get a little get a little early game for the join them until once comes back. And you know what I mean? So at least you now you got a little bit of game tape on, on one of those guys at least, you know, from from the, the, the week one game. And hey, who knows? You know, you might you might actually get the win still because you know they have a good team surrounding the quarterback position. So if you can just be a solid game manager and not turn over the football, which I know you just kind of spoke about, but if you can manage this game without having that, I mean, you're going to have the security blanket of having, uh, you know, a really good young running back. You got some good receivers that can catch the football. So just don't turn over the ball. And I'm sure the Colts will probably lean a little bit more on the running game in week one, just to take a little bit more of that pressure off of whichever one of those young guys starts. So, you know, you could, you could be good until Carson Wentz gets back. And then from there, you know, Carson Wentz, who is back with the guy who he had his best season under, and, you know, the Colts are still a, 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 a playoff team if everybody is, is, is healthy and on the field. So who knows? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think they definitely plan on uh, leaning on the running game. And I think that, that uh, game plan is going to stick even when Carson Wentz comes back, um, you know, you got Jonathan Taylor, who was the number two running back in rushing yards last year. And then they brought back Marlon Mack, who the year before was a thousand yard back. Like, you know, you don't keep two thousand yard backs on your on your on your team unless you plan on running the ball a lot, similar to what Cleveland does with Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I think the Colts are going to try to follow kind of that same model, run the ball a lot. And I really like what I've been seeing from Michael Pittman Jr. Michael Pittman Jr. to me is, is looked like he's going to take that next step up. He missed most of the first half of last year dealing with some injuries. By playoff time, he was a reliable target next to T.Y. Hilton. They've been featuring him as the number one guy, which, which is a little surprising to me because you still got T.Y. on the roster. But they love his size on the outside. Pause. Um, always got to throw the pause out there. This is Dion Grant from the New York Giants, Super Bowl champ. And you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk.